Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor John, we're ready for you. Yeah. Well, we're going to see how this goes. As I look around at the different elevations here, I'm kind of in denial of my glasses, but I do know that I need it, and uh, hopefully that'll help me here. So, only prayer warriors, rise up and take your stand. Our brother and sister and daughter have fallen ill. We are vulnerable. Our leader is down. Satan would love to watch us unravel. I say flee from this house. There is no room for you here, not in my house. Our line of defense is God and his word. It's too strong to be defeated. We are the only church. We will step forward and keep stepping forward until our pastors return. A prayer warrior is one who is connected to God intimately, consistently seeking to learn more about him. From his word, uses prayer time as a battleground for change. These are the ones in crisis you reach out to to pray for you. These are the powerful prayer warriors which you are. In the Bible, we read and study answered prayers. I think of Noah, Moses, Sarah, and Mary. The list goes on and on. But with answered prayers, there must come submission, belief, obedience, and persistence. Though we were studying in Moses about the people, and I often wonder is, where would we have been as those people? There's only one Moses. Would we have been the complainers? Not happy, not satisfied. Or would, you know, where would we fit? I remember a prayer I said a few years ago when I was facing decisions in my life. I needed to change. I asked God to help change my heart from serving my own desires to serving the desires that he had for my life. At that time, we had found the only church, but didn't know of what opportunities were around the corner. Oh boy. <laughs> Be careful of what you pray for, because it might come true. I was asked over a year ago to perform my son and daughter-in-law's marriage. Wow, what a special opportunity. I thought walking my daughter down the aisle was the toughest thing I've ever done, but marrying my son and, and daughter-in-law to be, that was tough. And then approximately six months later, Lori's grandmother became ill and passed away. I received a message from my father-in-law after confirming with the family would I perform grandma's service and I said yes. And now the presence, I stand before you, my church family, trying to fill a great void. When I was asked would I consider giving a message, I thought, Lord, you've done it to me again. <laughs> I think his reply would have been, I thought you asked for this, and I answered your <laughs> prayer. So yes, I accept this honor graciously. At first I thought, this won't be too bad. We had an ad board meeting. It sounded like it could happen pretty easy. <laughs> then I tried to think and put thoughts on paper, and it got all jumbled up. I was all over the map. We were in the road, in the ditch, through the fence and back. I thought, I can't do this. 
what was I thinking? Those shoes are too big for me. What am I going to t teach and talk about to a congregation that has so much more knowledge and wisdom than I? So I continued to pray. Help me, Lord. I thought I am only a simple man that loves God and my fallen brother. Please help organize these thoughts to mean something. Another thought filled my head, and I remembered the phrase. And many of you probably do remember this. WWJD. What would Jesus do? I thought, I'm no Jesus. So I thought, WWJD. What would Jeff do? <laughs> That's what I'll do. The What Would Jesus Do Industry was born in Topeka in 1890. A congregational minister named Charles Sheldon coined this phrase, making it a centerpiece of what was merely an attempt to hold his attention to his congregation. We probably need that today. So here I am, and let's see how this goes. I came to realization that my days on this earth were numbered and counting down each day. God had changed my heart and made me realize that I've not fulfilled what I desired the most. As a son, husband, father, brother, and now a papa, what was my heart hungering for so desperately? I knew of my eternal destination, but I didn't know that for all my family members. Where were they in their walk with Jesus? My mission now is to make sure that my loved ones know about Jesus and this gift of eternal life. I long to hear the acceptance for their relationship to grow in Christ so that they may teach the next generation. And I think of readiness and preparedness. God's coming or our departure. So moving forward, do you have a consistent prayer life? If not, you can easily become discouraged feeling that God is not hearing your prayer. Fear not, God hears even the sinner's prayer. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7 that Rod read, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus. And I thought, whoa, thanksgiving meaning to respond to God, God's goodness and grace, and grace with gratitude. So when you pray, don't worry. Thank God in advance for what he's going to do. You must believe. James 1, 6. But let him ask in faith, and no doubting. For the one who doubt is like a wave of the sea, and is driven and tossed by the wind. And the waves of the sea made me think, is the ocean ever still? Does this mean that more people are in doubt than in faith? We had an opportunity to visit the ocean and take in the, the waves and, and seeing that it made me reflect, but it even made me go back to as simple as going to Marion Lake. Even on a still, calm day, it seems like there's always something moving in that water. Um, church, remember, though our prayers do not change God's mind, he ordains prayer as a means to accomplish his will. We can be confident that prayer does change things, including our hearts. When you pray... You must have faith that God will answer your prayers. Do not doubt him. I have a couple of life examples I would like to share with you um, of prayer. 
Many years ago, I was trying to do what I thought was the right thing for my oldest daughter, who was from my first marriage. Wanting to give her a home with love, stability, safety, and opportunity. We spent many years in and out of a court system. My belief that I held to was only if the truth be heard, the decision would be easy for the judge to make. Lori and I continued this effort for many years. We were approaching the end of a several day hearing with hope and lots of anxiety. I remember that cool October night. We got home, I went to the barn to feed the horses for the night. I looked up into the sky. The moon and the stars were shining so bright. I pleaded to God, asking for his help and his wish for my daughter's life. And that I would accept the outcome for tomorrow's decision. I said, Father, I don't know how much more we can take. We are mentally, physically, financially spent. And just then a thought came into my heart and mind, and it was, how can you place a value on a child's life? I felt such guilt for thinking that I was giving up. But no, I won't give up. I'll continue as long as it takes for justice for her. The decision came the next morning, and it was in favor. It finally happened, relieved and thankful that God did answer that prayer. I thank God for his faithfulness, even when I didn't feel it. I didn't feel that I could continue, but he came through. A sense of peace and hope came over me that nothing is impossible with God. A prayer warrior is a person who chooses to fight personal, spiritual battles through prayer and wisdom of the Lord instead of his own strength. My next example, the new play set. Our granddaughters were coming to stay with us and we thought we wanted to encourage them to be outside and play. We will make a play set. I began the research since that's what I do. After investigating, inspecting, and pricing, I thought, these are a bunch of high-priced junk. <laughs> they won't withstand the elements of our country gale force winds. I will just make one. So I told Lori, and her response was, so when are you going to have time to do this? <laughs> My response, I'll move it to the top of the priority list ahead of everything. You don't have time for that. You're probably right, I said. So yes, I hate to admit, let's get that kit. And, I will, and she said, I will help you assemble. Not sure how fun that was going to be, but <laughs> okay, we will do this. We picked up the place at house, headed for home, the next morning came, I unloaded those boxes and began organizing all the parts and pieces. That's what I do. <laughs> oh my, I looked and those pieces were many. And it's going to take a long time. By looking at the picture of the box, and I glanced at the directions and I thought, ah, this won't be bad. So. Lori arrived at, to the job site, and my children always hear me talk about substantial footwear for the job. She came with flip-flops, <laughs> and we began. I said, how about this? You read the directions, and I'll do the work. Construction began. Hours passed, and we worked through lunch. Finally, nighttime came, and we still weren't done. Day two began with renewed hope <laughs> that we would complete this project, and we did after day two. 
finally done, I looked at those proposed anchors that they had to hold this thing in place and thought, this is pretty cheesy, <laughs> but hey, I'm ready to be done. A few months later, a storm came, straight line winds. I looked outside that next morning and my heart sank. Two days of work was demolished. It was upside down and had broken pieces. I thought, I knew it, I just knew it. And as we surveyed the damage, there was more. Our deck furniture was smashed against a broken side, glass all over the deck against the rail, but the handrail did not break. And I can tell you the handrail did not break because I welded it in place. <laughs> <clears throat> I was strong, but the furniture was weak. An update on this swing set, it's tumbled over an additional two times and is now held in place with many T-posts. The, to the top is half gone, but it still serves its purpose. So kind of the moral of this is we're going to get bruised and battered and bashed and pushed and shoved. And part of us is going to, some things are going to just fall off maybe. But we have to have renewed hope. You know, this is God's plan. This is his plan for our life. And though this example is only material things, of how man-made things are not forever, as though as hard as we try, they can't stand the test of time. The storms of life. We're going to have peaks and valleys, highs and lows. But remember, when we are weak, he is strong. I'm sure that you've encountered situations where you may or may not have heard someone say, I will pray for you. Did you? Or did this response just sound like the right thing to say in the circumstance? Thinking, I'm a Christian, and I want them to know that's what we do. Those unasked prayers become unanswered prayers. So the seriousness of and I can't remember Larry's statement, but talk the talk and walk the walk. We better follow through. Following the direction of God by using the Bible will give direction for our prayer life. It teaches us how we ought to pray, preparation of our heart, our mind, and our soul. John 14, 13 through 14. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father will be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Always pray in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the only way to the Father in heaven. And today, as we continue to lift up, not only our pastor, Don, Jenny, and everyone else that has experienced trials of COVID, of cancer, that need healing, um, all of our prayer concerns, I have some good news. I have some late breaking news. And this word, it's the oldest vaccine. It was developed over 2,000 years ago. It's tried and tested and proven. The cost, no amount of earthly riches can come close to being able to buy this gift. It's already been paid for at the cross. It's absolutely free to you. Time is running out. There may be only a few more to accept before my return. You may ask, what are the side effects of this vaccine? You may experience love, 
mercy, grace, and forgiveness. And guess what? The manufacturer, I am that I am. And this cures eternal residence, forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and hopelessness. So today, I ask, if you do not know the Lord, the instructions for this administration. If you want to accept Christ as a Savior and turn from your sins, you can ask Him to be your Lord and Savior today by praying this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive my sins, and may you give me eternal life. I ask you into my life and my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I want to serve you always. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by the grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It's a gift from God. Not a result of your work so that no man may boast of this. So today, remember, though our prayers do not change God's mind, he ordains prayer as a means to accomplish his will. We can be confident that prayer does change things, our heart. When you pray, you must have faith that God will answer your prayers. Do not doubt him. Nothing is impossible without God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us. <clears throat> Let us find joy and be with us this day. We pray for our prayer concerns and healing. We do believe that you can heal all. We pray for for this vaccination of eternal life, for each one, for those not knowing, giving them hope. Please guide us this week and keep us safe and lifted up. And I pray that we as the prayer warriors will rally around and lift one another up in days and weeks to come. Please help us to do the work and will that you have for us and to remember that you are all-powerful. We pray this in your loving name. Amen. Thanks, John. Thank you. We have a uh, closing song we're going to be finishing up with. As you stand, get ready to sing. Just want to remind you, too, on your bulletin, as you're standing, preparing to sing as we finish, uh, on the bulletin, it, it does say if you need any pastoral care, um, there is a list of people there and phone numbers um, that, we, that you could call on for, uh, for assistance. And we also have uh, contact with uh, Pastor uh, Lang in, in Marion, uh, who would, would assist also and is offered to give any pastoral assistance during this time. So let's go ahead and sing now, Onward Christian Soldiers.
<laughs> May the Lord keep you and bless you and empower us to be those Christian soldiers as we march forward. Let us not forget the sacrifice that you made for us. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.